You have cake litter everywhere. Would you kindly stop doing that while I'm trying to record? Hey guys, Spy Hyena and Luna here with another Animorphs vlog. Oh, okay. Screw you too. So, this is book 33, The Illusion. Now, I wonder if YouTube is going to make this a thumbnail now. I wish it would. Without my stupid face. It's a thumbnail. And lo and behold, two Andalites, two axes. And maybe it will actually show the. Yes, book book. So this book is an Eric Tobias episode, and it starts off with the Animorphs going to a school dance to kind of let loose and have fun, being normal human for like once in their lives, and that does not end well for Tobias because he's not human anymore. He's a hawk. He's also part and like. It is complicated. So he's struggling with his identity and he's also trying to have a nice time with Rachel. And he and Rachel get into a little bit of an argument, but they make up quickly. And then they slow dance and Tobias begins to feel normal for once because when he's with Rachel he feels more like himself. Just dance with me, Tobias, please. A slow song started. I was surprised. I actually knew this one. Goo Goo Dolls. Wait a second. And I don't want the world to see me. Cause I don't think that they'd understand. When everything's made to be broken. I just want you to know. I think Applegate knew what she was doing. After that slow dance, we get into the actual what's going on in this episode. So there's this anti-morphing ray, which is obviously not a good thing for the Animorphs to deal with. So they're trying to find a way to destroy it. And what they what they come up with, which is not a plan that everybody loves, but it's like their only option, is to have one of their own be captured and use the test device. And that gets it, they'll get them close enough to destroy it. So who is this? Well, to the bias, because he can fool them because he's already an oslet. He's already a hawk. So when they try to demorph him, it doesn't work because he's already demorphed. Okay, so they get captured by this sub -vister who kind of looks like Rachel, but is like Rachel if she became a controller or something. And... Um, she, so the, the two scientists who made the, the anti-morphing ray, it obviously doesn't work, so they're fed to the taxons, and then Tobias has to, like, watch them die slowly. And then the sub tortures, tortures the hell out of him, to a point where no normal human would survive it, but of course Tobias is not a normal human, he's barely human, like, he has it like that. So he's able to rely on the Hawk's resilience to get him through it. But the sub catches on to that and uses a combination of pleasure and pain to completely confuse his senses and like that he's not able to defend himself against that. And throughout all this, I really don't like torture by the way. Throughout all this we get flashbacks of Tobias's past and and we get like flashes of his life as a hawk and all that while he's while he's struggling with his own identity issues. And then he manages to distract the subvisor a little bit, learn something about her, it they that see even I'm confused now because the subvisor is actually insane. It's, and it's unclear which part of them is insane. Is it the girl, or is it the Yurk, or is it both? I think it might be both. 
So they're unable to separate the parts of themselves from each other, which leads to a very confusing scene where we see that this girl's actually insane. She she's like a sunset shimmer kind of before she was reformed. Yeah, there's this popular girl, she had everything she ever wanted, then her house burned down in the fire and she got trapped in it and she lost her beauty and she she joined the sharing because they promised that they would fix her if she would become a like a core member. So she became a voluntary host and her insanity led to the yerk in her head becoming insane. So before the mission, Axe turns yeah. Before the mission, Tobias turns into an android because he he acquires Axe and more of Sam and they, they there's this there's this funny scene where Tobias is geeking out over his new body and like trying to use a tail blade and he gets it stuck in a tree and Axe has to pull him out and and they learn a bit, we learn a bit about Andalites, and it's really fun, and it gets into the deep and horrifying stuff. So after that brief interlude, Subvisor regains control and hits the vice with the pain ray again. And the, and this time he very nearly dies, he goes insane, he beats his head against the wall trying to kill himself, and then the Andalite part of himself, Alfangor, Elf because he's really a Alfangor in some way. I think it's like his son or his brother or something. And so, because Tobias has this connection to Alfangor, his Andalite side comes out, and Axe explains it later at the end of the book, like the spirits of the dead coming to like ease the passage from life into death. But Tobias ends up not dying. This experience gives him strength. He becomes like he follows Alfangor's example and becomes a warrior and then the cavalry come in. They rescue Tobias and he and it's one of the most brutal fight scenes. And they eventually escape and then they're on the beach trying to like appear normal and not deal with the fact that they just went, they just were in a horrifying battle. And finally Rachel comes over and she and, and like she and Tobias hug and Tobias like Tobias of course feels more normal when he's with her and and that's basically how it ends. You know, for kids. So yeah, this is this is a really this is an interesting book. It gets, gets into really dark territory. And that's why I love Animals, because on the surface if you look at these covers, it looks like the just the weirdest, most quirky, funniest thing ever. But when you actually read the books, it deals with issues of trauma and the trauma, the cost of war, what happens when a child goes to war, and, like, morality, and, and all, like, this really deep and complex stuff, and it's written for middle schoolers, and this is, and this is why I don't like when people say that children's books are stupid, 